and welcome back to the Kit and Krista podcast, episode 46, the last one of 2020. I was going to say, otherwise known as the last podcast of the year. So exciting that we made it to the end of the year, and um, we're going to wrap up the the year by answering all your questions. We have like a huge backlog of questions from our wonderful Patreon family, so we're, we thought we'd just do a big old question Q&A podcast today. Yeah, we've got, we're doing literally 20 questions. We grabbed 20 questions. Whoa, and uh, not we're going to have two. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but we're going to have a great time going through those. Um, I think we should give a little, little time check too on when we're recording this. It's the day after Christmas. Yes. And is. tomorrow you're leaving on a fabulous uh, vacation in Hawaii. Yes, yes. Yes. I'm going on vacation through New Year's. Um, to Hawaii, to Oahu, which is an island that I have never been to before. So I'm really excited about that. But it is the day after Christmas. We are fresh from the Christmas feeling. I still have a tree up. I hope so. Watching yeah. this. I want to take this tree down today oh before, because I, I come back after um, the new year. So I don't want yeah. to, I don't want to see it. That's fair. I don't want to see it. I'm, I'm also a proponent of you got to get everything down. New, new year is the deadline. New Year that. is maybe the day after the deadline. New Year's Eve. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Sure. Deadline. Sure. Yeah. 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 And I need to clean my house. I don't want to come back to any messes. Oh dear. In the new year, I have a, a whole routine, so I kind of started doing that too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, I think we all ha- all had a great um, Christmas holiday so far. I know you had a, a wonderful Swedish Christmas Eve, which is yeah, very that's, nice. Yeah, that's that's my family tradition. We always do a Swedish Christmas Eve with all sorts of uh, wonderful Swedish foods. Um, you know, all these Swedish decorations that my mom's accumulated over the years. Get those some the Swedish best. drinking songs. We bumble our way through those. How come you never sing the Swedish drinking songs for us? Uh, because of the, the, the bumble. Fine, the fine people of this podcast would love to hear this I've songs. posted about those before, and some actual Swedish people in Sweden have said, hey, buddy, you don't exactly have this right. So, Seriously? <laughs> out of respect for them, my, oh, my no. far away in the past countrymen. I'm not going to go there. Oh, no. Yeah. That's shameful. <laughs> May have Americanized do, it some ways. <laughs> we do have a wonderful Patreon subscriber from uh, Cop- Denmark, I believe. Yeah. Copenhagen. Um, maybe he can help you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> not Sweden, but nice. yeah. <laughs> He's very nice. So maybe he okay. can help you out. Um, um, we do have a bunch of little uh, just odds and ends before we get into these 20 questions. Yeah. And this will probably be a shorter episode overall. Right, right. You know, we're, we're trying to keep it light here. It's the end of the yeah. year. And yeah. um, I got a plan to catch you. Gotta, now, you got so places gotta, to go. I got to yeah. edit this thing quickly before I It's a slipshod production. <laughs> oh, no. Get it out. Get it out. But uh, um, I think we would be remiss uh, by not talking about some of the news in our world, which is uh, Nintendo privating the whole... Nintendo Minute Library just out of the blue days before Christmas. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. It was really interesting because we had um, gotten some messages saying, like, hey, I I had this in my history. I was trying to watch this video, these old Nintendo Minute videos. And now I I can't anymore. And we were like, what's going on? And and, uh, lo and behold, um, yeah, that, that entire playlist of 429 Nintendo Minute episodes have been Set to private. They didn't delete it, but no. set to private. Poof. Yeah. Seems like Poof. there's still some, I mean, you know, nothing is completely gone from the internet ever. So right, right. Um, there are some places where, you know, all other channels that Nintendo has or other places sure. you can probably find them. But as far as having an easy place to get to all of them. Right. No more. Again, no it's... more. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't, you know, really have any insight into why now, you know, it's, it's obviously been a year since we posted the last episode, so it could have been just a, a good timing thing for them. Like, oh, it's been a year. Let's start to sort of move on from this or or get this off the channel. Seems kind of odd. It, it's kind of funny because we were joking around that um, seems like it made more of a splash to private them than to just leave them alone. Right. Kind of. if, if, if they didn't want people to talk about or, you know, um, be you know having conversations about Nintendo Minute, they they probably could have just left it alone and it would have been totally fine. But 
um, by them privating it, it seemed like it made more people talk about it. So I don't yeah. know if that was the intention or, or not, but uh, it, was, it, it was definitely entertaining for us. It is something that we had anticipated, though. And even, you know, when we were leaving Nintendo, we were wondering, you know, is this something they're going to do shortly after we leave or, you know, when we start this new channel? Um, I've, I've always felt that, you know, there's a wide range of, of thoughts within Nintendo about how people feel about us doing this. I'm sure there's people who like it and who watch and listen. We know that. I'm sure there's people who don't care, which is fine. Um, and I'm sure there's people who don't care for it either. Um, right. So I do wonder if that's part of it, you know, uh, we don't, you know, this association that we used to have with them, you know, we need to have sort of a clear break with that because now they're being more open and talking about all sorts of things and, you know, not, not always uh, as flowery about Nintendo as it was. So if yeah. that was the decision, then, then and I can understand that. And, you know, again, we don't, we don't own those old videos. It's their prerogative to do that if they want. So um, I, I wasn't feeling too bummed out about it um there were some people though like you know all of our great creator friends who we'd had on the show yeah a lot of them the messaged years. us yeah yeah i do i do feel bad for them because you know for them that was you know a great opportunity with a big audience um to get their name out there and they all did did wonderful so it's too bad that that, that can't continue on and then i did also hear from some other people i heard from from one person who said it was featured in one of our Mario Maker videos and that was so cool and it's a shame that that's gone so you know that that's a bummer there's all the great music from Dale North that he made for us over the years um mm -hmm. that's gone so but um yeah. you know I, I, I never wanted us to be you know a, a group of people or a channel that is like so heavily reliant on the past either so um yeah it is what it is yeah, I, I agree. I think um, it's definitely part of our history. Obviously, it's a big part of who we, who we are now because of all the, the stuff that we did with Nintendo Minute. And we made a lot of really great friends, as you, as you said, you know, with creators, with people that we've worked with. Um, and we've really built this community um, when we started doing these videos. So it is sort of, you know, part of your life that it doesn't really belong to you that someone else kind of has control over, which doesn't feel great sometimes. And I think that was one of the reasons why we wanted to start this channel. So we do have like the complete creative control over the stuff that we're making, you know, and, and now I, I think um, we're able to do stuff on this channel. That's really like a better version of Nintendo Minute because we we're able to be more ourselves. We're able to talk about things very honestly, um, whether it's good or bad about Nintendo or any other, you know, any other aspects of of gaming. And we were able to share with you like our whole selves, not just the part of us that love Nintendo. And and um, that's been I think that's been really great. And this is just another sort of proof point that like we made the right decision to move on from that and you know now now we won't have that issue because we've we own this now so right. um so now it feels it feels really good actually it feels like you have sort of more control over the creative work that you've done you know so yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna be making you a godfather offer that you can't refuse to buy the rights <laughs> to kitten krista in about a year oh no i just need yeah you're gonna be like in an orange grove somewhere <laughs> and then i'm gonna set that to private oh no <laughs> and the I'm right. going to show you. Oh, the rights. And um, <laughs> everyone's like, oh, we hope that you guys have had have some sort of, um, you know, you thought ahead. And, and uh, without going into too many details, we certainly have thought ahead. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. Indeed. And everything is 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 archived and safe and, and it's going to be fine. Yeah. Um, you mentioned, you know, the, the attention that it got. You know, there was sort of a, a bit of you know, very good news that came out of that for us, which is we shot past uh, 50K on YouTube, which um, was, a, first of all, a great a great milestone for us. I think also sort of a goal that we had both had our eyes on. Like, yeah, can we get to that by the end of the year? That would be cool if we did it. Yeah. But most importantly, Sonic Week is happening, people. It is yes. coming. It is coming soon. The blast processing is going to make it happen faster than ever. It's coming in June. <laughs> exactly. Get mentally physically, spiritually prepared. 
I'm talking to you because you're the one that needs to have this rehabilitation with Sonic. So you are going to just get centered, get your chakras aligned for Sonic Week, which is very exciting. Um, I'm very indifferent, so I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll, I think I'll. you might need some of this rehabilitation too. You've been you've been called out as perhaps a secret Sonic hater. I'm not. So I think this will be good for you too. I I, I definitely have not clicked with Sonic games. Um, oh, here that we I've go. Done with other games, but here we go. I'm ready. I the backhanded compliments are coming now. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, we were, we were so excited. We were both like refreshing the YouTube Studio app like a maniac. When we were getting really close yeah. to 50k um about a week ago it was like right before christmas and our whole community was was sort of cheering us on which was awesome and they were like it's like a christmas miracle i'm like yeah it's true i i will always remember this christmas as the christmas where we hit 50k on youtube which yeah. is again like a really big important milestone to both of us you know to do this before um we've been you know before the year uh, is up is was something that was like I was getting like hopeful and then trying not to get too hopeful in case we don't make it um but to make it was really awesome and uh yeah we were so grateful to everyone that is subscribed to this channel and um yeah Sonic Week is happening the first first you know month of the year I was, I was gonna say we do not have a date yet please look forward to a date coming soon yeah. uh, I need to be in touch with my wonderful uh sonic consultant uh slash advisor yes. who is going to be um uh helping us through this uh so that's coming soon I also want to say you know there are some people I think who are apprehensive about sonic week of like I don't I love sonic I don't want to hear this guy who hates sonic just rag on it for a week that's not what it's going to be no uh, not at all my mind is extremely open um, it's been a, you know, it's been a closed book for a lot of my life because I decided very early on that I didn't like Sonic and there have been some things that have reinforced that, but I am ready to accept it. I am ready to have my mind changed if it's going to be changed and I'm not, and I'm not looking to just, you know, poo poo it. Exactly. And I think there's so many different ways into Sonic now. There's like movies and there's, um, different types of Sonic games. And I, I think there's sort of more options now for you to like it versus, you know, 20, 30 years ago or whatever, where it was just like the one thing and then you didn't, you didn't like it, you know? Yeah. So I am also very excited to see your transformation from Son a Mario fan only to a Mario and Sonic fan, hopefully. Um, yeah, it's going to be really fun. I'm, I'm excited to, to do this in January. It's going to be great. I think the result is that I'm just going to become like a Bubsy fan. It's like, yeah, Mario, <laughs> Sonic. No, they both stink. Bubsy, though. That's, that's where it's at. That's, okay? the, that's the one I'm going to hitch this wagon to. <laughs> yeah. Um, moving on, a couple uh, other things. A video on the channel now. We did our first music-based video. Guess the song based on our favorite games. That was very fun to do. You should check oh that gosh, out. Oh, my gosh. So much fun. Yeah, I like how this was one part a just a straight up, you know, guessing video game music challenge and a one part um, how well do we know each other challenge. Right, so it was right. cool to mix this. And and um, this is a video that we've done several times over on Nintendo Man. I think we had like three episodes of Guess That yeah. Song. They were all extremely popular. And since you can't watch those Good anymore. Timing. Good timing by us. You can watch this. <laughs> we did not know that they were privating no, the videos we when we made that. this video, by the way. So I think we both did really well in this, too. It was not like a lot of... There was only like a couple times where we were really stumped. Yeah, yeah. I think we, there was definitely some pressure. Um, and, you know, sometimes you... It, it's scary when you're like, I feel like I know this, but I don't... Not like 100% sure. So you have to like kind of take that chance you know in some of those right, songs right which was really fun um but yeah these are all games that we love music that we absolutely love as well and um, i'm curious to see how well you guys do when you watch the video so definitely let us yeah. know if you like these songs if you you're able to guess them if you're disappointed in us oh. <laughs> let us know um and since we're trying to keep it light this week, we are not recording a Super Kitten Krista 64 video for this week. But, 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 um, we will be putting out. From, so when we did our vlog at the Game Awards, remember we went to the Universal Super um, Nintendo World store mm -hmm. and we had some snippets from that. 
people seem to really like that part and we're curious about that store. So we have a lot more of us in the store. So we have, we're putting out like a full store tour yeah. in that, in that usual Tuesday spot where super kit and Krista would go. So that, that should be a fun thing that gets you in the mood for, I mean, we're, we're like a month and a half away from the actual I park know. opening. So get ready with that. Yeah. It's exciting. Cause it was literally like we came back from LA and um, Nintendo announced the date for the opening of um, Super Nintendo World. And it was actually a lot earlier than I thought. So I was like, I was already in the mood because we had just gone to that store and it was so impressive and so cool. And I was imagining myself with some of these fun items, especially like those little headbands that they have. Right. Like in the park. Um, and now it, there's a date. And so we can all get collectively excited for that in, um, I think February 17th is the date. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm so looking forward to that and I can't wait to go back to the store and, um, and then like visit the actual park as well. It's going to be, it's going to, we're definitely going to be doing lots of videos on that. So don't worry. That's right. Um, we'll vlog all of it for you. Someone had a great idea for us to rank tier list, all the food in the toad cafe. We will we will do that. We're going to have to stay there for like several days to do all the stuff we want to do. That's okay. I we're like just going to move in to, to the Peach's castle. castle. Yeah. We're just going to move in. <laughs> just going right? to lay in our bed. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to need some time. Um, the good thing is it's very close to us. Like we live in San Francisco, so it's like a very quick plane ride away. So um, we, we can keep going back. Yeah. It's going to be great. Um, we have, of course, been playing a lot of games over the break. Uh, I don't think we're going to do like a full, you know, in-depth discussion of these games. We'll save that for next week and the, the full, like longer podcast, but maybe just do some, some quick thoughts on some of these games yeah. and, and like a thumbs up, a thumb sideways or a thumbs down for how you're a feeling about it. Just a, sideways. just a quick one. Yeah. All right. Well, I quick think I'll hits. start since my game is is right up at the top here, Melatonin, a game that I've been looking forward to for a while now. I got a code for this. Thank you so much. Um, and I do dove right into it. It was great timing because I have been complaining for months and months and years and months now about how there is no more rhythm games. And and this was exactly what I wanted. It was it's a it's a very like vibey rhythm game. The music is great. Um, and uh, I really like it so far. It hits, it scratches the rhythm heaven itch for sure. So I'm going to give this a thumbs That's up. That's a thumbs up. All right. Thumbs up. Uh, I started and finished um, on Christmas or the, on Christmas Eve, a uh, little gator game, which I am giving a massive two thumbs up to more than just one thumb, two oh, thumbs. Two thumbs. Um, this game, I have to say, it's making me rethink some of my game of the year stuff. Um <gasps> Or at least my top my top ten list, which I can't do. It's set in stone, so you I can't. Just, just my bad. But if we had done that list, um, literally like on December thirty first, bump somebody at the end of the year, like it might be different. That game is that good. <laughs> Who would you bump? I don't know. That's the problem. <laughs> That's why I was like, I'm glad I don't have this problem because I was I was really happy with my top ten, and I actually remember yeah. I, remember I had an eleven that I was sad to bump. Yeah. So you if I had a, do that. if I had a sad eleven and a sad twelve, I would just no. be sad. You, that's um, very sad. That's not how it works. This game is incredible. Everybody should play this game. You've started playing this game too. I've started playing this game. I'm about two hours in. It's so yeah. cute. Um, it's like Breath of the. I think that your description is perfect. Breath of the Wild meets a short hike. Yes. Uh, and you will be done with that by the time we record next week's episode. Mm -hmm. So I we will so. talk about that in depth. Yeah, so cute. Um, a game I got a code for, thank you, um, to WayForward, is uh, River City Girls. I got it right about the same time I started Gator Games, so I only played it for like an hour, and I'm going to be coming back to it. Nice. Um, River City Girls, I played the first one, um, thought it was good. This one is making a lot of improvements. It looks great, plays great. The music is really good. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to getting back to that. I'm I'm not going to give that a thumb any direction because I haven't I haven't played enough, but it seems mm -hmm. um, very yeah. solid. Yeah, um, we both got Sports Story. Which I haven't game... played this at all yet. Exactly, this is a game I haven't played either. But I, I in anticipation of my plane ride coming up and just some relaxing beach time in Hawaii. I was like, I'll just download all these games and have them. Um, and I'm definitely looking forward to checking out Sports Story. I was a huge, 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 huge. Massive, huge golf story fan. You were not. You, you and Mr. Furukawa. We are number one and two sports story or uh, I golf know, story right? fans. Yeah, yeah, he's one on two. I wonder if he's um, playing this. 
I hope so. Or Day like, one. He's playing it, and then he gets to the credits, and he sees his own name. He's not like, in oh, these credits. I should get to work. <laughs> that was my favorite Mr. Furukawa story, like, ever, when he told us that he, when he sees his own name in the credits, it's like, oh, no, I, I shouldn't be playing games. I should get back to work. That's really um, cute and sad at the same time. But a uh, huge sports story or i'm sorry golf story fan so very much looking forward to checking out sports story i can't I, I don't know what to expect golf story was so charming and cute um and fun and um yeah i don't know what to expect i'm, I'm excited to check this game out yeah that was an immediate backlog for me uh hopefully i can get to it <laughs> soon i also do i decided i am going to play stray or at least start oh, it right. um over the break i feel like i need to do that i'm, I'm very curious about that game i do have um, a bone to pick with you on, about stray why? Which why? is you? You and I were chat chatting a few days oh. ago, and you were like, "Help me! I need a bigger game to play. What do you think?" And I gave you these great suggestions, and I pushed like Stray what? as well. I, I said you should really play Stray because it's only like you know twenty ish hours. Yeah. So you'll finish it before. And the you break. convinced me to do it. Congratulations! No, you, no, I didn't. I did not because you ignored me for like at least two days, three days, and then you said like a couple days later. You were like, I was listening to these Game of the Year podcasts and everyone's talking about how great Stray is. So now I think I'm going to play it. <laughs> so instead of taking the great advice that you asked for uh, from your best friend, uh, you decided to listen to some bozos on some bozos, game, some goatee oh. podcast. You know what That's podcast what I was listening to? Kit and Krista podcast. So there, you're I turned it around yourself? on you. I was listening, listening to, to you yourself. all along. You were. I was. Liar. You're I do that to such... every episode. I listen to it to beginning to end. I don't you're actually do that. You're such a liar. This is why I have a way out, though. This is my story. You can't, you can't just, prove it. You can't. The day after you Christmas, can't prove you can't it wasn't become me. a naughty list person. Just the day after. <laughs> That's Santa the time to do it. It's still watching you. That's the time to do it. You got 364 days watching. to get back on. <laughs> To get right with Santa Claus. He's watching. He's shaking his head right now. He's like, oh, no. I made a grave error oh, no. this year with young Kito's on. Anyways, I'm glad you're playing Stray. I was very yes. upset with you, though. This happens to me all the time with you. You've done this before to me. Now I'm wagging my finger. All right. Uh, um, Death Store last year. Remember so that? I ended up not really loving that. So uh, look for full impressions of those next week. Um we don't have a sponsor this week, except maybe, no. maybe the sponsor is this giant zit on my face. No, that's not very oh, exciting. No. The sponsor uh, is... I'm going to say shout out is our Patreon. I was going to say the same yeah. thing. I, I And again, it's, it's perfect because we're doing this... Perpetual this sponsor. Mass, massive um, uh, list of Patreon subscriber questions. You know, all of our mm. questions for every episode of the podcast come from our Patreon family. Um, joining for just $2, we'll, we'll get you... Um, access to ask us questions and we do a bonus Q and a, which is really fun. Every week we have this really great discord, um, that we're, we're always chatting with our uh, Patreon community in, which has been great. It's been great over the holidays for sure to see what everyone's been up to and all the great food everyone's preparing and what people are getting for, for the holidays. So it's been really fun, um, kind of celebrating the holiday season with our wonderful Patreon family. Make it your so new year's us. resolution. Join us. Yeah. Please. We also do a weekly uh, bonus Q&A. We're doing it one this week as well. Um, and as we, we slide into these questions, I can start by reading a question that we answered recently in a bonus Q&A that you can only hear the answer to there. It's from uh, subscriber Joshy Josh. I was wondering if you could talk about the impact of any Bloomberg reports on Nintendo. I know they had some reports last year about a potential Switch Pro that ended up being the Switch OLED. When reports from publications like Bloomberg are published, does this sound any alarm bells within Nintendo? I know Bloomberg holds a lot of weight in the public eye when it comes to reports like this. So that is an example of the sorts of questions you can only get in our weekly bonus Q&As available on Patreon. Uh, all right, shall we begin uh, question one of 20? Yes, let's, let's dive let's get on into in. It. All right, it is from Brian Vendiola. Hey, Kit and Krista, what is your favorite and perhaps least favorite video game box cover artwork? And have you heard or been involved in any discussions about deciding on box artwork for Nintendo games? There's a lot of talk about how lame the box art is for the new Street Fighter VI game. And I've been curious if you happen to have any insight as to why most high profile games don't aim to have more exciting and interesting artwork as opposed to a close up of a dude's mean looking face. 
<laughs> my hunch is it's mostly a marketing thing, especially with differences in covers. For example, Japan versus North America. Box arts. Box arts. Very important thing, box arts. Um, I think one of my least favorite video game box arts actually is the Elden Ring box art. Oh. It's very basic, yeah. you know, and, and some of the... Um, some of the games that are kind of around that same ilk is like the Skyrim game box arts. Also yeah. very basic. Like I, I see what they're trying to do. They're very, it's very much like just the logo or just the, the sort of the, the game symbol or something like that um, is the focus, but it feels like for a, a big, you know, triple A game like that, it's like, should be a little bit and the, the landscape of that of Elden Ring is so cool. The the look, the art direction is so beautiful. Like it's kind of a missed opportunity to have something so simple on the box. Yeah. Screen, but, yeah. You know, that's my personal um opinion. I think some of my favorite box arts definitely has to be Nintendo games, though. I think they do box arts so well. Like Mario Kart 8 sticks in my mind as one that's just like so dynamic looking and so cool. Even like all of the Splatoon box art, it looks like, you know, the characters are like jumping out of the box at you because it's so colorful and so bright. And Yeah, that, that um, first year of Switch releases, the 2017, all those yeah. first party releases had incredible box art. Except for 1-2 Switch, which was extremely Oh, lovely. yes, exactly. That was, oh. But everybody, everything else, though, had wonderful looking box art. And uh, it was just, um, every time we saw, it, they would reveal sort of the, they call it the key art, which is basically the box, box art, um, to the marketing team, we'd always be like, oh, it looks so great. You know, I can't wait to see how this, this shows up in all of our marketing materials and stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah. I thought long and hard about a least favorite, and I, I honestly couldn't think of any that I strongly dislike, so I'll, I'll take a pass on that. My favorite <laughs> has always been um, Mario Brothers 3, which is just the big Mario in the raccoon suit with that yellow background. Mm -hmm. I think it just conveys like the joy and fun of the game and also shows you immediately like something that's new and different about it of, of yeah. Mario flying in the, in the suit, which you've never seen before. So I think that'll always be my answer. Um, I, d I did get a chance to be involved in the Breath of the Wild box art discussion. We had a couple options that we were choosing from and we chose the option, obviously, that Nintendo of America put out. And Europe chose the other option, mm -hmm. which is kind of more Link turning around. I think they're both good options. I think uh, we chose the right one, so, which is, <laughs> you know, and, and we all had the same conclusion of, you know, the, the world is as big a feature as the character in this case. So let's put the spotlight on that and show people the vastness of that. Right. But I think that's, you know, an example of, you know, there's a lot of people involved in making those decisions. There can be a lot of back and forth. So it's not always easy to arrive on the image, which I think is why maybe some of these end up getting watered down a bit. Yeah, exactly. Um, I remember when you were deciding the box art for Breath of the Wild, there was so much discussion about, do we need to see Link's face? Right. Um, because that image that, that was eventually chosen for the box art was Link's, you know, the back of Link's head. Um and the world of, of Hyrule kind of laid out in front of him. And um, yeah, it was a really interesting discussion. There was definitely like a, a pretty clear, like 50, 50 split of people that are very adamant about, no, we need to show the character's face. Yeah. It's really important. And then the other side of the argument, which eventually won out, which is. I was the tiebreaker. You don't, you were the tiebreaker. Yeah. You made the good, you made the Sledgehammer right that decision. That's right. Yeah, I thought I thought it was one of the best box arts. And yeah. It looked so different than a, a Zelda game, which is exactly what you right. wanted. Um, so I, I thought that was the right decision as well. All right, next up we have Frulio, who asked, do you have any behind-the-scenes stories of the Wara Wara Plaza and Wii U chat video? And there's an image of it below here. If you had the opportunity, what would you have done differently to showcase the software less awkwardly? And how many times did it take Reggie to perfect his Japanese lines for the video? <laughs> yes, this is famously the video where Mr. Awada and Reggie um, did Wii U chat together and drawing little, little hearts and doodles and they everything. draw little hearts, I, which I, is so cute. I don't know what Frulio is talking about. I, this is perfect. You, you couldn't improve on this. Yeah, I, I think this is, um, again, one of those remnants of the Wii U era that only can live and only could exist in the Wii U era. Like, there is no way... I can not see like Doug Bowser and Mr. Fukuoka chatting and drawing hearts on each other's faces in in this 
you know era that we're in now like that just doesn't make sense at all yeah but and, um, and i mean let's be honest we you chat was kind of a dud of a feature it was. so it was I, I, again I, I don't know what else you could have done uh we we again yeah. we famously did that for a official work meeting once and work. we collectively decided this stinks. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> good on them for, for coming up yeah. with this. Yeah. I do like one fun little story about the name Wara Wara Plaza, which mm. I guess in Japanese that Wara Wara sound means like blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> and that's the sound of when you like ha have like a crowd of people and they're just like talk. It's like indistinct chatter, like chit chat. Um, that's what that name means, and that's why they named it that, well, which I thought always, was so cute. Always a, always a great name when 90% of your global audience has no clue what it means. Exactly. Yeah. But I thought it was, it's very cute, but it's it's basically, it basically means like blah, 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 Yeah. <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, Zroid is next. Here's one that might require some introspection, or maybe not. Oh. If you both had not been permitted to produce Nintendo Minute, how do you think your careers might have changed? Would you likely have left Nintendo sooner? Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Um, it definitely would would have been very different. Um, we definitely had a lot of things that we were doing at Nintendo that was not producing and recording videos for Nintendo Minute, like. I would say like Nintendo Minute was this like 10% reprieve that we had from the daily, you know, struggles of working in a corporate environment. And then like 90% of our jobs were like, you know, like different other things, whether, whether it was doing more traditional public, public relations or when, you know, when, when you became the head of social, when I started um, managing the creator program, um, there was like so many other quote unquote, real work, <laughs> I guess that we were doing. So I'm not sure if my career specifically would have been different. I think I would have still learned all of those skills that I learned, um, you know, at Nintendo. Um, what I've left sooner, I don't know. I think I really stayed because, you know, I felt like I was still learning a lot. I still felt like I was, you know, making a difference whether or not I had Nintendo Minutes. So Maybe not, you know, maybe I wouldn't have left Nintendo sooner. Um, I think it would have been maybe like one thing that would have happened is what if like we didn't do Nintendo Minute and we weren't as close friends mm. as we are now? Because I think that helped us become closer friends. And there's some time, many times during my career at Nintendo where I wanted to leave, but um, I kind of stayed because I didn't want to like leave you. <laughs> and um and so maybe if like that was a alternate universe, like, and we weren't like that close, I would have been like, see ya. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and would have left or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I feel kind of the same way. I, I don't think it would have made me leave sooner. And again, there was no shortage of things for us to do. Um, I think, you know, for me, when I, when I made that move from public relations to social media, like that might've been a harder transition for me actually, in terms of like, because at that point, like, I didn't come from a social media background. So I've, I've always felt that having Nintendo Minute and, and creating content gave me a bit of credibility with that team of like, hey, look, here's how I'm contributing to this. You know, I'm not just, you know, the boss who's putting decrees down from Mount Pius or anything of that. I'm kind of getting my hands dirty too. So I've always thought that that really helped me a lot. So um, that transition might have been a bit trickier and a bit longer but but otherwise yeah I, I don't think it would um have been crazy different right yeah right. uh blank hope i said that right is blank. next hey guys i'm curious to know if you have any stories about games that didn't sell very well at launch but managed to change course and become a success after a post-launch change in marketing or additional marketing push ah uh, yes do you have any the post-launch push. As I thought long and hard about this, and and this happened like with I don't know seventy five percent of the the campaigns we had. It was like, oh, the game's out. We've done everything in the campaign. Now we need to come up, scramble, and do this post campaign. Yeah. To you know get things going or yeah, totally. wh whatever it is. But I couldn't I couldn't really think of many success stories. There was so many times where there was like you met the forecast, the sales forecast, but we're gonna change the sales forecast right. to force you to do some kind of like post launch 
campaign to see if we can just sell even more, you know, so you never felt like you were like doing a good job, which kind of, kind of was, you know, not yeah. great, but, um, let's see, is there any, I really, yeah, I feel like those campaigns never were very successful. Like we would try yeah. our darndest. Um, sometimes timing though could be on your side for some of these things. Like for example, if a game, let's say a game comes out in like September or August, which is kind of a slower month overall for for you know for buying games i guess and then there was like some sort of like holiday campaign that had the game um within within that holiday uh campaign then it's like three months later or two months later when you're running that campaign like that game gets a little bump um hard to say if it's changed the course completely or is it just because like people were looking for holiday gifts and that was just on the list or something like that. Well, but, I was going to say that I think yeah. the best examples of this came from Japan and they would come to us and, you know, share these stories of this game came out. It was kind of middle of the road sales wide, but then we recognized like, Oh, golden week was coming up and we made yeah. this whole campaign about people playing the game with their families together during golden week and the sales skyrocketed and then they just kept selling skyrocketing like crazy. Yeah. And that was never anything that we could really replicate. And I think maybe has something to do with how kind of small the, the Japan market mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Where, you know, the U S is just so big and there's so many different ways of life that we have here. It, it's, it's hard to ha have that same like sort of message. phenomenon. Yeah. So I, I would always just say like, well, that, well, that's nice, but that's like really hard for us to do. Yeah, it's like one message that they that would work in Japan, like everyone celebrates Golden Week in the same way across right. the country would not be the same here. Right, right. Um, the other thing that I, I always think about is Europe, too. They have always have like different kinds of success stories with yeah. games that would never sell at all in our market. Like Art Academy, for example, was one of that one of them. And for some reason, they had like all of these really cool partnerships and they sold Art Academy like game busters in Europe. They're just classier than we are. And people <laughs> and people at Nintendo of America would get mad because get on, so on the mad. whole, we, I mean, we sold the most out of any region, but these yeah. sorts of stories would make people mad of like, we can't let Europe pull this on us. Yeah. They can't win. <laughs> yeah. It was very competitive between the markets. <laughs> so yeah. Funny. It was, uh, and it would be all the way up to like the, you know, the yeah. executive yeah. levels. All the execs were like, don't the let rivalries. Europe win. Yeah. yeah. And they were not happy about the Art Academy. Um, just again, like selling like hotcakes in yeah. Europe and then it was doing very poorly <laughs> in America. And they were like, what are your ideas for Art Academy? We're like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, Riven is next. And I think Riven has a question near the end of this as well. So good on Riven for getting the double here. Um, he is the asker of questions. It's true. <laughs> I remain despondent that Xenoblade Chronicles X remains sequestered away on the Wii U. Also, oh. Final Fantasy VII Dirge of Cerberus was silly fun, but it's so difficult to play these days since it was a PS2 game. Are there any older games you'd like to see come to a modern console or PC, whether as a remaster or as a simple re-release? Yes, it is really difficult to play some of these PS2 games or, you know, Wii U games that haven't been remastered for Switch. Xenoblade Chronicles X definitely is one of the ones where I'm like, why not? Because that was one of the ones that, um, I played the most of bef before uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and I really love that game it's kind of sad that it's just like dying on the Switch yeah um, you know all that on Wii U. like Wii, DS, 3DS those systems were so unique it's harder to bring those games over to modern yeah. systems especially the DS and 3DS I do worry about those games as we get further out mm -hmm. since there's not just a quick fix way to, to bring those over yeah. Um, the games that I, I really hope one day get a proper re-release, but would take some work, so I'm a little doubtful that it's going to happen, is the three um, Castlevania DS games. Oh, yeah, um, those are so good. Dawn, Dawn of Sorrow, Portrait of Ruin, and Order of Ecclesia. And those did use some light touchscreen things mm -hmm. for, like, fighting bosses, which is why I'm I'm doubtful that, and, and it's Konami, so... <laughs> you know, um, you're you're probably, gym, so. you're probably a little, little lazy on that. Um, but it, it is something that I think about that those those generations of games are just harder than others to mm -hmm. re-release or, or bring over without maybe more work than some of these developers want to put into it. Yeah, that's true. I would also like Galaxy 2. 
Yeah. Gosh. I really, really, really would it's like a deal that. there. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them seem like no brainers, but yeah. yet won't they won't bring them over. Right, so. right. It's a little disappointing. Uh Jeb is next. Kitten Krista, I wanted to know how much Japanese you had to learn while at your jobs at Nintendo. Was it something that needed to be used on a daily basis? If so, were there designated Nintendo translators in meetings and assisting in receiving or sending emails with Nintendo of Japan? What is the biggest miscommunication you can think of that happened at Nintendo as a result of the language barrier? Uh, we well, for, fortunately, know. we did not yeah. have to know Japanese. We did not have to know Japanese. And sort of, sort of our, our day-to-day contacts and, and coworkers in Japan all had um, all, all knew English and spoke English very well. So we're very lucky um, that they put up with us <laughs> and learn English. Um, but there were a lot of big meetings, especially with developers or different teams within um, Japan that we do require translators. There is a designated uh, department that is all translators and they are the most amazing people ever. I do not know how you do that job. That, that is would be a so hard. Job. hard. Just um, grinding that, out PowerPoint decks all day long. Grinding out, yeah. like translating all these emails, translating all your presentation materials, and then live translating and getting your nuances across in a different language. Like, that is really difficult to do. And I remember we, we would have to have a lot of prep meetings with our translators for big presentations so they understand, like, this is sort of the goal that we're trying to get across. Like, this is what these slides mean this is sort of you know so there's le- more than just like straight up one-to-one translation of what you're saying from english to japanese it was like a lot more involved yeah. in that which was something that was like something that we had to learn how to manage yeah yeah and so i mean like you said like there's nuance in, in whatever you're talking about that it could be maybe technical for some people or others that that was always like a good rule of thumb was like, if you found a good translator who got it and clicked with you and clicked with whoever you were presenting with, like hold on to that for dear life, because it's so hard to find. I did, however, to, to the dark side of this question, I have seen a translator be removed in the middle of a meeting because the opposite was happening. And this was like a big meeting. This was like, you know, this contingent from all these global offices came and we're all talking and we're in the biggest meeting room and they get the tap on the shoulder. And it's like, why don't you, why don't you hit the showers? Why don't you call it a day? (laughs) That, that was embarrassing. I felt really bad for them. Um, It was probably again, you know, poor, poor prep by the person um, running the meeting. Right. Um, But yeah, that, that was a shame. Yeah, that that definitely would be pretty nerve wracking. Again, translating those big meetings are very nerve is very nerve wracking. So I, I you got to give them credit for just like doing it. You know, um, my favorite translator though was the person that uh, was helping me with um, launching Smash Ultimate. Oh yeah, and not only did this this person is incredible, um, translated everything, translated and wrote like I would send emails and they, he he would translate the emails into Japanese and send them. And then he was the voice for Mr. Sakurai for all of those directs. Um, and it was just like incredible. Like this is an example of someone that completely understood, like understood the product, understood, you know, what we were doing um, from like a marketing perspective and just like got it. And that's like the most important communication channel too, because things could go so wrong and things did go so wrong all the time that like you really have to choose your words carefully or else it could make the situation that was already bad, like so much worse. So I was very grateful to have, have him as the translator for that. And our next question is from the Natrix. Kitten Krista, if video games weren't called video games, what would you call them? This is tough. Video games were not called video games. Uh, Electronic... Oh Fun boy. Time. Interactive entertainment. Whoa. That's good. It's, it's not, not bad. It's terrible. Electro- something electronic. Electronic <laughs> entertainment. Vir- virtual games? I mean, think back to like the 70s or whenever video games were yeah. like invented. Like it's like it's like a computer board game. <laughs> right. It's like you're playing yeah. a game, but it's like not as it's not tangible yeah. like it was. Yeah, ele- intangible ele- games. There we go. We figured it out. Electronic board games, oh, intangible boy. in parentheses. Wow. <laughs> well, good thing we came up <laughs> with video games, huh? Good uh, thing we came up with that. A right. side question to this, which maybe we can ha- come up to a more definitive answer. 
I often see a debate of video games, two words, or video games, all one word. People oh. feel strongly on either side. Which way do you feel? Two words. I video feel strongly about two words games. as well. Video uh, games. I don't know what these, yeah. these uh, one word folks are talking about. Yeah, that's yeah. too long. I mean, I Strange. guess like it, maybe if you wanted to have it be one word, you could put a dash in between. Vids. Call them vids. Games is is <laughs> G A E M Z. Yes, that's yes. the name. V I D G A G A E M Z. Yeah. That's the new name. Uh, Cerulean Bodhi is next. Uh, <laughs> shout out to our Bodhi winners, uh, Bayonetta Community Bay uh, Bodhi winner. Yes, uh, my cat is going nuts. Your right cat now. is going <laughs> going <Wow>. nuts. <laughs> Are there any video game songs that always make you emotional when you hear them in a way that surprises you? <sighs> Kiseki, the song, the ending theme for Pokemon X and Y always gets me watery eyed despite my emotional connection to that game not even being that particularly strong compared to other games. Hmm. Interesting, because you you got uh, I, watery eyed in one of our in this in this video that we were just talking about. Guess the song. I was gonna say, watch that video to see which song made me a little misty. Yeah. Um, I always get very emotional with music and video games. So if you wanna pull at the heartstrings, people, then music is the way for me because yeah, even if I don't really, you know, like the game that much or whatever, or I'm not having that too deep of a connection with the characters, if the song is good or something like that, then I'm like so in. I think that's ex that's actually exactly what happened to me for Xenoblade. Because you were saying, I was thinking about this after we had this discussion about how like Mio and Noah just started to get to know each other. So why are they having this like big, deep emotional moment in chapter five? Like you were like, I'm not, I'm not buying it and yet. And then you like, heard that song for the 800th I know. time. And then I heard the song. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> I'm buying this love. Um, but yeah, you're totally right. Like they basically had like, they're like strangers that just started to get to know each other. And then, um, and then the events of the very like emotional, emotional events of chapter five happened. But I think without that song, it wouldn't have sold that moment at all, you know? But um, that is one, I think sometimes I get a little misty when, um, you know how like in Animal Crossing, um, they have like a different song for every hour of yeah. the day. Like there are some of the songs like late in the night, like oh. past midnight or like 11 p like, you know, late, late, like bedtime. That's very like peaceful and. Um, I don't know. I, I feel, I don't, it's not sad or anything like that, but it just feels like you're having like a very sort of like solitude kind of feeling. And like, maybe there's a little hint of like loneliness too, but not in like a bad way. Not like, yeah. like, oh no, I'm alone forever. <laughs> but there's like something, um, some kind of feeling that, that, that those late night tracks for Animal Crossing give you this like very peaceful solitude sort of lonesome feeling that hmm. it's unexpected for a game like Animal Crossing is like you know just you on this island doing right, right, digging right. a hole or whatever so um so that, I think that's one of my unexpected ones well I, I remember vividly um the first song that that made me feel that way was kind of the opening theme and i it, it's, it's a theme that they re return to often throughout final fantasy just like the the title music do 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 it, it, it like builds as the song goes on and it's like me as like some dopey 11 year old like what is this feeling what is happening to me <laughs> <laughs> i have emotions yeah yeah but yeah that's that's so interesting that you know cerulean was saying here even though they're not super connected to that game um, yeah, yeah, that can happen. It's just the, the power of music. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Uh, Ray Del Empire has the next question. Hello, Kit and Krista. Do you still listen to the Nintendo Power podcast? I still listen to it. Sometimes I miss an episode or two. And even though it's not my favorite, I like to keep up with it. You better not be missing any episodes of this podcast. Oof. To listen to the Nintendo Whoa, Power podcast. you really turned Ray. the table Ray. on Ray Del Empire there. Uh, no, just kidding. Um, I... Yeah, I, I listen sometimes. Um, I do like the Nintendo Power podcast. I will say that this is something that we struggled with, especially you struggled with when we were working on the Nintendo Power podcast is there is, because it's from Nintendo, there is like a level of like 
scripting, you know, that needs to be done and approvals to say things a certain way. So sometimes, sometimes I do have kind of a hard time when, you know, you have to say, when I played the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild video game on my Nintendo Switch TM, like it's a little bit hard to listen to that stilted language sometimes, yeah. but it's not their fault. They have to. The, right, the, legal, right. the legal team will come down. There's a lot of them. teams imposing yeah. these rules on that group, right, which, right. which can make it kind of a clunky listen at times, which is a shame. Right. It's a shame. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I do check in on it still, mostly because I, I mean, we know the people who are on it and they're people yeah. that were like on our team and our friends. So I like yeah, to hear like I what they think them. about games that are coming out. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it, it is more, even more apparent now, like how, again, just how clunky some of those conversations be. Yeah can be just because of the rules that have been imposed on it. Right. And and it is, you know, a shame because there's so much creative stuff that they could do with it as far as, you know, bringing in developers or talking more openly about all sorts of different games or, or you know, formatting episodes different ways that they just can't do. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. They, they, you know, they passed 50 episodes and they passed the five-year mark. So congratulations to them on that. Yeah, the other thing is... Um... It's not very frequent. It's monthly. So right. that's another thing that was sort of a struggle when we were working on it. Um, that's so funny. They just passed 50. We're at 46. I know. So <laughs> <laughs> we're coming for you. We're, at, we're coming. We're yeah. right at your back. Watch out. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it makes it a little bit uh, less current. And when I listen to podcasts, especially for video games, I'm like, what are what are the current games that people yeah. are playing? Like, what are, what is like the news that's happening in the, in the, you know, in the video game industry like, where people are talking yeah. about and it's less that. Yeah. For the you know, Chris, Chris Slate had some great things to say about Stray that really put me over the top with that game. I knew it. <laughs> it Chris Slate, <laughs> but not me. I knew it. I knew it. Uh, Prada Jake has the next question. Question. Do you have any insight on Nintendo's history of TV spots as part of its North American marketing strategy? Some of these early commercials for games like Paper Mario and Pokemon Red and Blue are iconic. N64, Super Smash Brothers, Super Metroid, and that's before we even get to the We Would Like to Play commercials. Though, in the Wii U and Switch era, clever TV spots seem to be more and more of a thing of the past for Nintendo, and it's more just families playing on the console in a living room with gameplay footage. What are your thoughts on this change? Yeah, so the advertising team sat within the office that we worked in, they work with some big name advertising agencies on all of the Nintendo commercials. Um, and they and they have had the same agency for decades as yes, well. Yes, exactly. That's, that's notable. Yeah, they have like sort of sort of a, a agency of record that's very historic that has done a lot of Nintendo commercials like from what you're talking about from like the early times of N64 or um, GameCube and things like that. I, I think that the commercials kind of follow a similar path to other types of marketing that is done at Nintendo where when something isn't selling that great um, or something is struggling a bit, there's more creative freedom. When something is doing really well like Switch, then you don't really need to be that creative. Just show the people playing the Switch, you know? Um, I think Wii was really interesting because that's just like, how do we, how do, how does, how do you communicate like the new features of this like very unique and different video game system? And of, of course, Reggie was like a big proponent of that. And he talks about that a lot in his book as well. Um, so there was like a level of creativity there that was kind of built into that commercial and the need to communicate what a Wii you or what a Wii is. Um, but yeah, as you've very, uh, um, very much noted here, like as we get to where we are now, it's very much more straightforward and it's, it's kind of mirrors the marketing that is now for switch as well. It's very straightforward. It's like, you don't see, you know, any sort of creative things happening. Um, it's just like, switch just kind of sells itself. So we don't need to do much. Yeah. I think when, when you find something that works, you know, you stick with it. That's just you know, common sense and, and human nature. And, and with the switch, those, those ads are effective um, of, you know, just people in like real world settings, not necessarily doing anything that exciting, but just showing how the system can fit into your life. Um, you know, we've all been seeing it for, 
five plus years now, so we're probably getting tired of it. But you know, those ads are are usually more for a, a mass audience who's not as plugged in, mm -hmm. and they continue to be effective, and they'll continue to do those for as long as they are effective. And you know, that's when you see them taking some of the the more strange swings, as when they're they're trying to find the thing that is going to work. Exactly. Yeah. Chrome has the next question. Kit and Krista piggybacking off of some of the Pokemon questions we've seen. What was your experience with the late 90s era dubbed Pokemania? I was a wee lad back then, and I know that you both weren't Nintendo employees back then, but I'm always interested in what older fans of the series have experienced. Did you fall for popular rumors such as Mew, Under the Truck, etc.? What did you think of the games at the time? I was not so wee at the time, um, so I definitely was part of... Pokemania back in the day. Um, yeah, I think uh, for me, that's when I really started to know, like started to get exposed to Pokemon was through this 90s um, era where it was just seemed to be everywhere. And I, I think my exposure to it was really not even the video games at first. It was like their cartoons. And um, I had friends that were into the cards and, and things like that. So it was definitely for me, like, what is this? And it wasn't a video game. And then of course, for me, I, I really liked video games at the time. So when there, when I learned that there was video games around Pokemon, I was very interested. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's really, it, it really was a phenomenon. And, and sometimes you see this Pokemon phenomenon, like resurface, like with uh, Pokemon Go, for example, was like another, almost like a nineties era Pokemania um, resurgence where all these new people suddenly were like, what is this? Like, I know, you know, I recognize what a Pikachu is, but you know, what, what is this way for me to experience um, this IP? So yeah, I was, I was in it. Yeah. I was in high school at the time and that was sort of a limiting factor of there were not a lot of people around me who were very interested in it too. Um, but I did have one friend and kind of the timing of it was we were in, um, we were doing a school project that was kind of like a semester long thing. It was me, him, and this other guy who was kind of more of like a, a jock type guy. Um, and we would do our, we would get together and do our work on the project. And then when we were done, this other friend and I would, would do like Pokemon trades and battles and stuff like this. And the third guy would just sort of shake his head at us and leave. Um, but you know, it's, it's great that, you know, I had that experience and, and that was sort of my end of the franchise and I could experience it when it was fresh and new and, you know, still have those those memories and associations with the, the original Pokemon. Um, but I, I did sort of luck out because I, I, we may have been the only two people um, in, the, in this oh. high school who cared about Pokemon at the time. Yeah, I think I was a little bit younger. Yeah. So I think that's probably why. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fake Airbnb has the oh. next question. <laughs> hey, Kit and Krista, this question is a little outside of gaming. This is also a Pokemon question, I should say. Oh. Uh, it was announced today that Ash and Pikachu are no longer going to be the main protagonist of the Pokemon anime. Sad. I know the anime is ultimately a marketing tool and a good one for the Pokemon games. My question is, for either of you, during your time at Nintendo, did you have any involvement or insight on how the anime was going to impact how you marketed a Pokemon game, or was that a totally separate department than yours? Second, did either of you grow up watching the Pokemon anime, and have you kept up with it, or are you sad slash nostalgic about Ash leaving the show? And in general, do you both watch any type of anime? Just curious. Thanks. Um, so the TV show was managed you know, more by the Pokemon company and different groups there. But we would get occasionally a glimpse into like the big picture of Pokemon of, oh, you know, this the new game's going to come out here and then that's going to kick off these new storylines and this new season. And they're going to, and these are the key Pokemon that they're going to be featuring there. So it's not anything that we had to do anything with, but we would hear about it and understand that, which was helpful. And, and also just frankly impressive how much they can, architect this whole you know marketing machine around these games yeah that was always impressive where not only did you have a game launching with these this that's featuring this particular region and these characters you would always get some sort of other angles in whether it's storylines in the anime or merch or you know 
hit songs with celebrities. Like they had so many different ways to get people into the new Pokemon game that year. So that was always really cool. Um, I did grow up watching the anime, but I've definitely fallen off. Um, now I don't watch it. I don't keep up with it too much. I did. What, which one did I do? Did I watch? I think I watched the Alolan region one from mm. beginning to end. There, I really liked that one um, for Pokemon Sun and Moon. But I haven't watched it for a while. I did see the the big news that you know Ash is is going to be sort of phased out or or whatever at the end of the season, right? And they're going to start a new storyline. It definitely is like the end of an era, you know. It's kind of sad that I'm kind of sad about it too. Pikachu. Yeah, it's you like, made it this long. Why now? He's gonna, he's gonna be he's gonna become a master, and he's gonna. Okay. Like, that's like his the top, right? And that's he's he's done it. All right, he's gotta retire. Just that um, twenty year little, journey. I'm a little sad too. Yeah, it, yeah, it definitely is. Like you can't you don't think about when you think about Pokemon, you immediately associate it with Ash and Pikachu. Right. So. Right. Again, to the, to the earlier question, I didn't watch that much of it when it was coming out, but I have gone back and watched many of the early seasons and even some of the more recent seasons in in the recent years. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm impressed with how good it is. It's really good, and, yeah. And um, it definitely, you know, is its own thing, but does a good job of tying back to the games. And it's, and it's just fun to watch on its own. So I have a lot of appreciation for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we are back with another uh, video game uh Advertising campaign question from Silver6477. Can you guys talk about the Settle It in Smash campaign? Did either of you have anything to do with this ad campaign? Oh, so it. this was for um, Smash U, for Wii U. Yeah. And this the, the, the goal always for these big launches was what's kind of a theme that we can have that can go across all of our marketing activities. Mm-hmm. And this was one of them. And, you know, sometimes you just couldn't come up with one. So yeah. sometimes like you would try and try and try and propose all these like ideas. Really forced, but this and one feel, just, yeah. yeah. So this, I, I do think this was a pretty good campaign. I mean, the idea was like, use, use smash to settle your everyday disputes in kind of this comical way Yeah, that, that makes sense and fits with the theme of the game. There was, in addition to the um, ads, this whole like nationwide tour that they were doing, I think with like right. college football games. Yeah, tailgates. They would go to tailgate parties and they would set up this thing and let people play it there because that was pretty aligned with the target audience. And it was like audience. such a good visual because you would have like the two sides of the opposing teams. Did you go to any of these? I did. I did go to some I feel like these. you did. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I don't think I went to any. But like it was cool because you would see it's like, you know, college A versus college B. And then you would have these two colors and they're already in like a rivalry, fun sports yeah, rivalry yeah. kind of state of mind. And then you would get them to play Smash. And we got these great photos of people like playing against like their college rivals and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I actually really like this campaign, too, because it does not only did it work really well in like an ad it worked really well across like all of these other marketing right. things, whether it's like events, like the tailgate things. We did a, like a lot of PR um, kind of like fun videos and other things around this theme of settling, settling it in smash. Um, and it was really fun and it didn't feel forced. Like you said, like sometimes it just feels like you're forcing it. And this one actually felt like it. Made yeah. sense, so. It is interesting that in this game, you know, the marketing teams came up with that, but in smash ultimate, it was really Sakurai. It was like every, everybody is here. Everyone is there. Here. Here's the yeah. theme for you. And you're going to use right. this, which yeah, was also exactly. great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Link has the next question. What are your opinions on the multiplayer focus Zelda games? Four Swords, Four Swords Adventures, Triforce Heroes. Personally, I'm not a fan of them, but I did enjoy the multiplayer modes in Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. I like them. Oh. Triforce Adventures, I will say I'm I'm not a fan of that game. Triforce but the other Heroes. two, the Four Swords games are fun, especially when you can have like a proper group. You know, those that, that is kind of the challenge of these more like puzzle based multiplayer games is like once you've done it, it's hard to have that same thrill. But I mean, the first time through one of those games with a full group, that's great. I guess oh. I, I don't I don't go to Zelda to play these little sort of, you know, non narrative based um, multiplayer games. I, I really go, I feel like to Zelda to play like I want to get like immersed in the world. I want to have this like 
big adventure experience. And so it doesn't feel like the multiplayer games really like do that. So I'm not, I'm not a huge fan. No All right. I would like to here. have a co-op Zelda yeah. game that yeah. is like a full Zelda adventure, but maybe like one person plays as Link and one person plays as Zelda. I don't know. Like that would be a really interesting way to, to have multiplayer as part of Zelda. That's not sort of like these little sort of, you know, surface level experiences with, yeah. with the universe. Jan J 757 has the next question. Hi, Kit and Krista. K and K. Kank. That's a new way to put it. Kank. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe this is a question for Kit. I moved to Vegas this year for work and I travel often and there's a big Konami office on the south end of Reed, the airport. I assume Konami is big in gambling, but what exactly is this for? Well, you're exactly right. That is a <laughs> gambling or, you know, the, the gaming that is related to gambling yeah. Um, office there and they do make a lot of like slot machines and other you know gaming vegas style machines that you see in casinos and that's what it's for and i i saw that the first you know one of the times i flew into vegas as well i was like whoa it's right there this giant building it's got a konami logo slapped on it yeah. um and it's 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 fun to look into all of the ways that konami is a very diversified company yes vitamins exactly and once you do Gyms. that you can understand why they don't care that much about games or they're glad to just sort of let the gaming side fall by the wayside. Yeah. Yeah. It's always interesting to go to Japan and see all these different Konami offices that have nothing to do with video yeah, games. Yeah. Uh, Daichi is next on September 12th, 2022, a Nintendo direct and a state of play happened on the same day. The day before, PlayStation's Twitter replied to Nintendo's tweet, with the tweet being Big Day Tomorrow from PlayStation. What do you believe is the reason that the tweet was made? Also, what do you think that peeps at the Nintendo home office thought about that tweet? Thank you for the great content. It's truly special. Here is the tweet for reference. What um, say you? Social media. Well, leave. I mean, there, you know, there has been a nice trend. Um, that Nintendo's not a part of, of the big three gaming companies having more of a, you know, congenial relationship on social media and congra congratulating each other when things happen or just, you know, having a bit of back and forth. And I think that's all this was because, they you know, there was a direct and um, a state of play. And I think, you know, PlayStation, you know, was maybe trying to connect themselves with the direct to get more buzz going because a, a Nintendo direct is just frankly always going to be bigger than a state of play at this point. Um, of course, Nintendo had no response at all, and they never will because they're not <laughs> into that sort of thing. But um, yeah, I, I I like that trend. I do too. I love it when um, you see different you know companies talking to each other. I like the uh, Doom Isabel discussion the best. Um, that was hilarious when people were responding oh, yeah. to <laughs> Animal Crossing. Um, doom crossover <laughs> i want to see it let's yeah. do it isabel um so it was always fun to see that it's too bad nintendo does not like to participate in these kinds of things they're very conservative and they, they never respond, i guess they did really. we did do it like once or twice mostly around minecraft games yeah for microsoft and yeah. and they would come and say like oh and we want to do this big um you know back and forth with the xbox account and the minecraft account and I would always have to like quadruple check of like, does everybody know about this? Is everybody cool with this? Is everybody on board with this? Because ordinarily that's just not something that you do. Um, and in that case, people were fine with it because there was like this partnership in the game that that, that Nintendo Microsoft partnership, I've, I've always been fascinated by. Um, what is but, that conversation? Like? Yeah. How did, how did that happen? <laughs> what, what's the story behind that? We, ne we never really heard, um, but it's, it's nice that they have it. Paul Gale has the next question. Hey, Kit and Krista, which of the original six Final Fantasy games are you going to play first in the Pixel Remaster set? Do you have a favorite from that set or from the overall franchise? Thanks. This was big news. Uh, strangely, this happened at like 11 p.m. one night. They just yeah. announced these pre-orders, which sold so out weird. immediately for no reason at all. Um, very strange, but I am I am so excited that's pretty cool that these are finally coming out um i have been waiting a long time to get these um for me it's final fantasy 4 which i mentioned before that's like an all-time game for me i'll be playing that first and really enjoying it 
Um, there's some other games in that collection that I haven't played, the ones that never came out in the US originally. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Final Fantasy VI is arguably the best one out of that group. That's I might, the one for me. I might try one of the unreleased ones before I go to six after that, just because I'm, I'm curious and you know, those, those have good reputations too. Yeah. I'm excited about final fantasy six, which I think was my first introduction to final fantasy. Oh, wow. And it was at my, one of my friend's house that I first saw her playing this game and I was wondering what it was. Um, and she was the one that introduced me to final fantasy. So. Yeah, I, I really contain, remain baffled of why there was so much cloak and dagger about this ever coming out, you know, outside of PC. I don't know why PC was the platform to begin with, and PC <laughs> and mobile. Very mobile strange, better, but I'm, yeah. I'm willing to set that aside because this is finally coming out. Exactly. Uh, oh, Riven. We're back to yeah. Riven. Will you be revisiting your Xenoblade 3 character oh. bracket now that you've both had more time with the game? Hashtag justice for uni. So I did hint at this in our Game of the Year podcast. You say we made that character bracket when we were still pretty early with the game. I like I think I stick with my choice. I whatever. I think my ratings of of uni are the ones that I would change. I think I stand by the others, including the ones that are not super flattering. I did not give uni a bad rating, so it's not me. That's the problem. You were the uh, my first my first of impression of uni was not the best. I thought she was a little a little grating, a little annoying, maybe, like her, maybe, her maybe a little, head. maybe a little dopey. The, um, but no, she, head. she's, she's uh, definitely a character like that. I came around on a lot. Um, but all the, all the other rating, even my high rating for Tyon, the hot, one of the hottest characters in the game. You didn't care nope. for that. Wow. Again, stand by my rating. I didn't do anything wrong. Perfect <laughs> wrong. As always. Wrong. Perfect as always. Wow. Interesting. Uh, we have one more question from switching it up underscore. Hey, Kit and Krista cannot believe we are at the end of another year. Firstly, thank you for all the work you guys have been doing on the podcast and with the community. I've loved being part of the journey since the beginning. So my question, what has been your highlight of this first year being a creator? What has been the greatest challenge? What do you want to achieve in the new year? Take care and stay safe over this holiday period. Happy holidays from switching it up underscore. Um, before we answer so this, sweet. we should say next week, um, it'll be, again, it'll be our first podcast of 2023. We will be sharing some thoughts on, um, some tweaks we'll be making into the yep. new year. Um, new ideas this, that we have. Yeah. But really this is fun. a great chance to look back at 2022. Yeah. So the highlight of this really, again, is being able to connect with, um, this community in so much more of a deeper way than we ever were able to do before when we were at Nintendo, like having the freedom to really get to know all of you and for you to get to know us, like all of us has been really cool. And, you know, when we first started this channel, it was all about like keeping this community together with Nintendo minute ending. We were um, wanting to find ways to stay connected to you guys. And I think we're doing it. Like I continue to be just so proud of Uh, what we're building and all of you are like the nicest people ever. And every single time I go into the discord and I see a new person that joins and the warm welcome that everybody gives them. And then that new person goes, this is the friendliest discord I've ever been in. I'm like, good job children. (laughs) And I feel really proud because I think that that's what we want to build is a really positive environment where we can all share our love of video games. And we, we love sharing our stories with you um, so that has absolutely been my highlight. And I, I obviously cannot ask for anything more. So it's been wonderful. I agree with that. You know, Nintendo Minute was a was a fan-oriented show, but there was a limit on how fan-oriented it could be. So it's been great to actually do that, um, yeah. you know, as, as you were saying. Yeah. Um, as for the challenges, I'm just going to say this. I got an email... An autom- I think this was an automated email, but it might have been sent by like Ebenezer Scrooge or something because it came <laughs> at like 10 p.m. on Christmas Eve. It was like, prepare your 2022 de- tax documents today. And I just about <sighs> rage quit out of whatever I was doing. Yeah. I don't need that on Christmas Eve. It's The business side of it is really hard. And like there's so much more to just like 
making videos. <laughs> There's it's like basically just, just filling out incredibly complicated paperwork. It doesn't make any sense at all. That's, I mean, that's really the hard thing about it. Yeah, I cannot look at the government website again. Like, I don't understand it. I don't know what I'm reading. I don't understand. The other thing that's been the bane of my existence is running payroll. Oh. You think that that would be really, really easy to like, you know, do like manage your, your company finances, but no, no, the state of California has to make it extremely yeah. difficult. Um, but yeah, some of these business things, I'm just like, I am not equipped or yeah. do I have the know-how to do this? I hope I'm not making a horrible mistake um, because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, now we have it on a podcast that I can blame you if it all goes sideways. Fortunately, th those are not things that we have to deal with like literally every day. Yeah, but but now not. that we're getting into the quote tax, tax season, season, as they say, it's going to... Ugh. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a slog. Yeah. yeah, the business side is definitely hard. Yes, but thank you for the wonderful question. Uh, looking back at the year, and thank you to everybody for our 20 questions today. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. Great questions as always. Um, and we can wrap things up by thanking our wonderful Patreon superstars and then our One Up Club. All right, you begin this time. All right. Aaron Hash. Ben Icorn. Maru Mayhem. Eigenverse. Jordan Collette. Kiss My Flapjack. Mike Chin. Mr. Rogers. Rain Tech. Roy Eschke. Switching it up. Underscore. <laughs> Zephazon. The Shark Among Men. VGM Life. Link, the Hero of Winds. Angela Bycroft and her pig Molly. Turbocharge Nerd! Thomas O'Roik! Yay! Yay! Uh, Alright, 1UP Club graduation ceremony. Here we go. A. Ron Burgundy. Adam and Ansley. Jean Malari. Ale Alejandro. Alexandra Pratt. Astro Dev. Welcome Dano. Brad SF56. Rook. Roostache. Chancellor Fairley. Christopher Lay. Cozy Tar. Captain Cinnamon Buns. Captain Alex. C. Roper 17. Daniel Cold. Daniel Valencia. Dachson. Doo Doo Face. Douglas Chomix. Dino Punch. Elite Peach. Espars 50. Ezrato. Fart Priest 69. Furbound. Fernie and Jess Forever. Red Rossi. Full Combro. Var. Garrett Hullfish. Ian Schiff. Israel Izzy. J. Rando. Jabroni Jones. Jackie Z. JK99. JBJ. Jeff Yoakum. Jeffrey Hernandez. Jerry92602. Jesse Hernandez. John Responte. Jonathan Rowe. Jordan Hemmerly. Joseph DeHayes. Joshua Clements. Just Juji Fruit. Just Camtro. Kai Camarcio. Kawa2796. Kelp Shake. Kevin Delane. Christorati Kid. Christopia Party with Me. Kyle Gamer Get Very Rookie. Kyle Kretzer. Kyle LaBeouf. Kyler Nelson. Linnell Stickman. Lego My Frogger. Lemma. Leviahu. Hit. Lucas Pico. Mad Dog 5981. Marky Man 64. Matthew Ruald. Mecha Dragon 101. Megan. Michael Cravens. Michael White. Mikey. Mr. Andy Pong. Murph. My Tran. Nasir. Nathan Burkhart. Panda Buns. Paul Gale Network. Piano Psychopath. Prime Factor. Prince Charmless. Quinn Hardigan. Reaver. Ray Chiron. Ryuji Utsuho Oku. Renee Rivers. Reese Williams. Ryoth One. RJ Kern. Rob Osborne. Rox. Ryanetta. Sam Neeland. Sebastian. Hernandez. Sharif Jackson. Sheer Cold Vanilla. Shinryu. Lobro. Schmiggles. Shrews. Silly Ferret. Spicy Munchkin. Steel Citron. Tefu. Thomas Alvarez. Travis Torline. Troopage. Tug's Puppy Bear. Tuscoob. Tyler Geis. Video Game Stupid. Virtual Bot. Wicked Davy. Will Ernst. Will Johnson. Zudiverf. Zelgaroth. And a Zeroid! Woo! Yay! All right. 
Awesome, awesome. Well, don't forget to subscribe to Patreon. It is patreon.com slash Kit and Krista to keep all of this going. Thank you so much for all of your support. You're making all this possible. And if you're watching on video, do us a favor and subscribe to the Kit and Krista channel. If you're listening on audio, you can leave a five-star rating and a written review. And don't forget to follow us on our other social media channels. We are on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook. All right. Are we done with the final podcast of 2022? Thank you, everybody, for a wonderful 2022. Yeah, we can't wait to um, see you guys next year. We're going to have lots more fun and adventure in 2023. That's right. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.